if um, you can let me know if, just type in the chat, if you can tell me if um, this, the screen is okay, or if you can't see anything, if you are, I'm actually a bit worried that nothing's happening. Um, let me just see, let me just go back and do this because this is now worrying me. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that was okay. And oh God, no, I don't want to see me. Thank you. I don't want to be part of it. Ali, go and get it. Can you can see? Oh, you can. Thank you, Deb. You can see the screen. Right. I will do that again. That's not a problem. I just wanted to make sure that it was all okay. I knew I should have brought my, um, that I should have brought, um, see, yeah, right, let's get going now. If there's any problems now, I can't hear, I can't see. I should have brought my phone or my tablet out and made sure. Never mind, keep going. We'll keep going. As I said, just let me know in chat if anything goes wrong. So, Operation You've Got This. What this is all about is we are in our third lockdown. Um, we are, um, as I said, you know, we've got um, problems with this that it's, you know, this is not good. This is not good for us. Um, it's all right, I'm just thinking here. That's just sure. No, never mind. Um, this is not good for us that, um, you know, it's, we, we should be working. Sorry, I've lost my total train of thought here. So this is what we're on about now is that we're going to need to get things because things are going to take time. It's going to take a while to fix things. But we have got this. 2021 can still be successful for you. Even though we've got this problem now, we still can move forward. We still can make 2021 a really good year for us. But as I said, it's going to take a while for us to fix fix things through it. So a little bit about me, because just in case you're thinking, well, who are you? What are you to do? You know, tell us what to do and how to get through this. There's a little bit about me there. For those of you that don't know me, um, I've been a holistic therapist since 2000, running my own business, Alice Holistic Healing Hands. <clears throat> so I've been, um, as I said, running that now for 20 years. And in 2013, I launched um, Alice Therapy Academy, actually eight years tomorrow to the launch. Um, when I launched it, because other therapists had kept asking me over the years how I kept going, what I kept doing. Um, because I said it's you know it's good to be able to say that I've been in you know business 20 years. So uh, due to a couple of things, I ended up um I'd run a one-day workshop and then converted that then um with speaking to a business mentor, I converted that into um Ali's Therapy Academy, as I said, which launched in January 2013. Um I do get uh, my own business help. Um, I am a member of the Entrepreneurs Circle. Um, I also get help from the FSB, from the Federation of Small Businesses. I have used other mentors in the past. So WOBS, um, Female Entrepreneur Association, Leone Dawson. So I've worked with very many different people over the years to help keep my focus, to help keep me on track. And also by going on workshops, conferences, things like that, I was able to take the information from there and tweak it and put it into my own business because obviously holistics works in a different way. As I said, it'll take time to fix things. 90% is done by you, 10% is done by the outside world. It's what you think and do that will make the difference. And the reason I'm saying this is because again, I've seen it so many times that we all start blaming the government or we're blaming the scientists or we're blaming the experts, et cetera, et cetera. And then, oh, you know, we're not getting paid and I'm not getting the self-employment and can't get furlough. And what am I going to do about my staff, et cetera, et cetera. But it comes down to us. If 
you know, we can only do what we've been told. If we're told to go on lockdown, we go on lockdown. Um, and I know it's, you know, it's all fairly easy for me to do that. But when you're self-employed, when you're running your own business, you've got to adapt and pivot to emergencies, to things that happen. So, OK, pandemic is the first time we've ever come across anything like this. But if you fall ill, what happens then? If someone in your family falls ill, what happens in your business? If a client doesn't turn up, what do you do about that? We're always having to deal and control and take care of things. We are a leader of our own business. So it's down to us how we do the marketing, what we do to get the word out there, what we do to be visible. It comes down to us. 10% is done by the outside world. So my question to you is, are you playing to win or playing not to lose? And you might think this is a bit of a of a funny question to ask, but are you playing to win? So are you pivoting? Are you trying something different? Are you stepping out of your comfort zone or are you playing not to lose? So by that, I mean, are you staying as you are, hoping that you can, um, you know, that you'll be OK, and that you can keep in business by the time we've come out of lockdown again? So it's, you know, playing with winning is keeping in contact with clients and playing not to lose is saying well, con, con, the clients can contact me. How many times have I seen when we've gone on a lockdown, therapists saying, I'm really sorry, I'm having to close now, but you know where I am. Do not hesitate to contact me if you need anything. That's all well and good saying that, but to me, our clients' tension doesn't stop, anxiety doesn't stop, the aches and pains don't go away, the you know tension in the shoulders don't go away, their headaches, their sleepless nights don't go away. It may have got worse now because of the lockdown. So to me, we should be keeping in touch with our clients. We should be communicating with them, either ringing them up and checking out how they are, or emailing them or texting them, just to keep, you know, keep letting them know that you're about and that you can help. Check in if, you, if they need anything. So again, worrying never solved anything. This too shall pass. It is a worrying time. I am not trying to say that the pandemic is nothing, that COVID-19 is nothing. It is a worrying time. But again, you control and do what you can because worrying never solved anything. You can, you know, if it keeps you awake all night, what's that going to do for you the next day? It's deal with what you can do. If there's a problem, then you look through it and you sort it out because worrying has never solved anything. I mean, how much are you paying attention to the media? Are you there every day looking at the media? Are you there reading the newspapers? Are you there reading, you know, watching, following the news? And I bet if you're doing that, that helps to, you know, that constant thing helps to bring you down. I know with there's a couple of things on social media now that I've snoozed a few people because of their constant sharing fake news, constant having a moan at the government, constant having a moan at the local GP for not doing their injection yet, for not having information, for not just constant, constant, constant that I've put them on snooze because I wasn't enjoying social media and it was making me quite miserable during the day. And I don't want to lose friends with them and I don't want to lose contact with them. They're obviously going through a bad time. But they just need to stop seeing so much of the media, stop seeing so much of the news. So any problems, then we deal with it. We don't have a meltdown. You know, it is OK to not be OK. We should all be allowed to fall apart sometimes so that we can find ourselves all over again. Um, you know, again, a lot of you have found this this evening through the Therapist on Business group. That's there to support you. That's there if you've got any questions, any worries, you come into the group and you ask 
And then one of us, myself or another therapist, um, another member of the community will come in and they'll answer it. So whether it's asking about questions about online booking systems or social media platforms or marketing or what, you know, how do I sort out my payments or what's the government up to or anyone got any ideas for this or, you know, can I promote my business? Can I promote my offer? Things like that. This is all what you can do within the Therapist on Business group. That's what we're there for. We're there to help. And so, as I said, it's control the controllables. That's the Therapist on Business group there. So you've got control the controllables. Focus on what you can, what you can do. So, you know, don't give away the responsibility. As soon as you start doing that, you're giving away the control. So again, as I said earlier, it's there are a lot of people around that are, that are blaming somebody else. It's somebody else's fault. It's the government's fault, all the councils, all these teenagers, all these students, people not wearing a mask, rule breakers. Just control what you can. Um, often I was seeing it in a local um, Facebook group um, for my area. And there was people moaning about people walking around Musebrook Park because it was so many people and there was people that were stopped there and chatting. Nobody knows their situation. And if, you know, for one, they were there as well, being part of those numbers. But for two, if that park is too busy for you, go and walk somewhere else where it's quieter. I, you know, I was fine. I walked down there today and I walked down the beach today, but I won't go down there on a weekend because I know it'll be busy. So I walk then somewhere quieter. So you control the controllables. You control what you can, what it means for you. So this is where we focus on what on what you can do. I'm always looking, try to look at life in positivity. You know, I'm always looking at the glass that's half full. My husband's the opposite. He's the pessimist and it's half empty. So I always try to be the positive one. And I'm still like that now with work, with the situation, what's going on in the world. Yes, it is. It's a worry and it's a scary time. But I'm trying to control what I, what I can. I'm trying to make things comfortable and happy and lovely for me in my cabin with all my twinkly lights. And I'm like that within, you know, within the house as well. And I go out when I have to for, for shopping or for exercise. But it's not let not letting anyone have control of how I feel. So it's and I think we should be like that with, you know, with business. It's stepping up and being a leader. So you step up with your business as well is to take control and have a plan. So this is where we're going to look at now the one to 13 tips on what you can do for you and your business over the next couple of weeks. We've heard um, there was something that came out recently that they, they think that um, restaurants and cafes and that won't reopen till about mid-May um, because we're all keeping our fingers crossed um, that we're going to be allowed to be back into business middle of February. But what will you do if the government suddenly say, well, no, we're going to stay closed for longer? The numbers are getting better, but we're going to stay closed for longer. What are you going to do? It's so where I talked about um, earlier on this month in my vision plan workshop, where I had plan A and plan B. And plan A was for working hands on and plan B was for working hands off. So it was very much, you know, what I can do when I'm working and what I can do when I can't work with my clients. So it's that pivot. It's that change of things. Um, and, I, and I do think, again, it, it comes down to us. What have we got in mind? What can we do if things aren't going the right way? Hopefully, this will be the last lockdown we'll have to go through. This third one, what we think we're getting the injections. The injections are now coming through. They're rolling them out. So hopefully, what with the injections and, you know, that we won't have to go through another lockdown. This will be the last one. But what happens if it's delayed? What happens if we can't open till, say, March? What are you going to do to, in the February? And this is what we're going to be looking at. So number one is your mindset. 
hopefully you've got your workbook um either you know you may have printed your workbook off already if not you've got notepad and pen you can make a note of all this and then add it into your workbook later so everyone remember ian jury and the blockheads reasons to be cheerful um this is what i wanted to put down there are reasons to be cheerful this because i said it could be the last lockdown the vaccines being rolling out three is are we nearly there yet so are we near the end of our lockdown that we can get back to work four a lot of money is waiting to be spent i don't know about you not being able to go out and see friends and therapists and clients and that for a coffee I've saved a bit of money, so you know I'm able to spend it. Not everybody's been buying stuff on everything online. Um, you know they've still got a bit of money to spend. So you know, yeah, I'm not the only one. There's other people about as well. They've still got that money to be spent. Number five, the economy will explode. It will. People will go and spend that money. Um, so yes, we are in a bit of recession. But again, I think what with the economy, I think once people come back out and can go back out there, they'll be spending. Number six, what happens to your biz is down to you. So whatever happens to your business is down to you. And this is why I'm saying in this time now, use the lockdown to work on your business. It doesn't have to be all day, every day, nine till five. If you've only got 90 minutes say that um you've got to um homeschool your children um you know maybe you know you've sort of got lots to do you've got sort of family maybe living at home at home as well and you're homeschooling children and you know different things that we may you may not have the time you may not have just the mindset to think of work but if you can give yourself 90 minutes a day to focus and work on the business that will help you in the long run for when you are back at work um so you know you can use it to grow um you know grow you and grow the business owner um you know if there's if there's things that you still can't wrap your head around maybe it's social media or maybe it's marketing maybe it's time management maybe it's, it's techie stuff how to you know adapt and and update your website maybe it's looking at your pricing maybe it's wanting to do your video for the first time have a look at these things that that you know that can help and help you grow and help your business and if it's something you're really burying your head in the sand about that you don't want to learn then have a look at outsourcing have a look at somebody else doing that for you so my number one question to you is what needs to happen in order for me to and that's the question to ask yourself is what needs to happen in order for me to do a facebook live what needs to happen in order for me to sell my valentine vouchers my valentine packages what needs to happen in order for me to update and maintain my website what needs to happen in order for me to write a blog so think of these things that you want to do and what needs to happen in order for you to do it so that's my you know my first question so it's not massive it's you know it's massive action you need not massive work to get it done but you know, you can make bookings or excuses. You can't do both if you want a business. Um, again, talking to therapists now over the years, and it's, oh, well, you know, I haven't, and I said to you, right, how are you getting on? You wanted to look at knowing your numbers and sorting your website out and doing marketing, et cetera, et cetera. When I'm asking them, what I get back is, oh, but I haven't had time. Oh, but you know, my family of you know come back. Family does come first, but you need to have a look and find time to be able to do to be able to do the marketing, to be able to follow up people, because you can't do both. You can't make excuses and run out of time and then wonder why you've got no business. So you need to have a look. That's my wise owl rule. Make if make bookings or excuses. You can't do both if you want a business. So you've got to give yourself hours during the day of, of 
of when your appointments are and you need to fill those appointments. People don't know you've got those appointments if you aren't telling them, if you aren't letting them know. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's the first thing that you really need to look at. Why wait until you're allowed to open again? Don't wait until you suddenly got an opening date of say, oh, I don't know, let's say 15th of February. Why wait till then to start putting all the information out, start letting people know what's going on in, the, in your clinic, in your therapy room? Why wait till then? Let people know what's going on. So by posting on social media, what you're up to behind the scenes, um, what you're looking forward to when you get back, what you're going to be doing, what you're going to be offering. And as I said, Valentine, Valentine's packages or treatment vouchers or Mother's Day, or maybe, you know, online challenges or video courses or, um, you know, different, different things that you can create. Um, as I said, you can't sit in the comfort zone to move forward. If you're happy with your business and it's chugging along, then you wouldn't be on this call. But if you want your business to move forward, if you want your business to be able to get in more clients, if you want your business to make more money, that's why you're here. So, oh, I'm missing a couple of things there. Um, number two on your workbook. Number two is goals. So goals for 2021, as I talked about earlier, is plan A and plan B. Um, plan one also, um, you can have the big picture, which is like my 10 year plan, which I'll talk about in a minute. And plan two, which is the next few weeks, you know, end of February, mid March, the world will be feeling better and we'll be back out into working. So don't wander aimlessly. That's why I've got my plan A, my vision board, which is hands on work, which means it's freedom that I can get out and about so I can have adventures. I could go to Glastonbury. I can go to Harry Potter World. Um, I can do all the different things, bits and pieces that I want to do when I get out. And plan B is what I call hands off. So it's stuff that I want to do here. It's stuff I want to do, like working with resin. Um, it's stuff, there's journaling I want to do. There's more social media I want to do. There's creating training courses that I'm doing. It's building a website I'm doing. So there's all these different things that I'm doing while I can't go out and about. And then my plan A, which is, you know, getting out on my adventures. So number three is the plan. So I talked earlier and I mentioned to you about plan one, which is the big picture. And I was doing this when as I was going and um, creating my vision board um, workshop ready for my year, but also for um, the vision board workshop that I ran online um, the other day or the other week. And um, over the, the previous week, and we've been doing it for years, and we've been looking at escape to the country. My husband and I big dream is to move to Devon or Cornwall, you know, in a, when we retire, um, you know, go out and live, live out in the country. It's probably most people's dreams because live out in the country. I'm a country girl. I come from the country, obviously born and born and brought up in Wales. And I used to live out in the sticks and my nearest neighbour was a mile away. I had to walk um, three miles to get the bus to go to school and college and whatever. Um, so I've lived um, in the countryside, lived and brought up in the countryside, but I've lived in a town since I've been married and um, the um, army wife. So we traveled around with the army. And then when we come out, we moved down here and we've been still in the same house now for 26, 27 years. So as the area's got now more built up, I'm itching now to get back into the country. And my husband wants to go and live in the country now because the area's too big for him. So we've been watching Escape to the Country for a few years. And we've got this dream of our ideal house would be a nice big country kitchen with big table and chairs in there with a, um, 
log burner and a sofa in there and then the living room will have an ingle nook fireplace we had this all worked out in this house and we just wanted enough land for my husband to be have a bit of a veg plot and a few and i might have some chickens and whatever anyway we were watching this one program and there was this this place this property um i mean it was in it was in um, um norfolk so it wasn't an ideal area but this lovely house and they walked in and it was it was there it was our kitchen it was our living room and then they went out and they had a field with it and i was thinking cool, you know what could we do with the field and then my husband turned around and he said oh, well that will be your area and i said why is that and he said well you'll have your shed in there and you'll have this and all of a sudden my head just went because it's a shed that i've seen i've got this nice little cabin in the garden there's a shed that i've seen that's got three rooms in it and i could just all see it i went to bed that night and i was just dreaming it i was living that life that law of attraction that manifesting i was living there and i'd had this this three room cabin and one was my training room for the academy and for training therapies the middle room was my office to run the academy from online and all the extra work and then the third room was going to be in my apothecary it was going to be one wall was going to be full of shelves with all herbs and plants etc and i was going to be doing herbal remedies and that and then outside in the field i was going to have my own little herb garden where i was growing the plants to make my remedies there was going to be a, a yurt where people could stay and also um run um classes and that from there and then also in the field, it was going to be big enough to, for me to grow a little mini orchard and a mini woodland. I had all this. It was just all in my mind. And that was it. When I woke up the next morning, I wrote everything out. And that's my 10 year goal. Want to retire when I'm 67. So I've got 10 years now to aim and build and grow for this, that we move um, into the country and um, you know run retreats and whatever that I can do that I can I can run all this. So that's my 10 year goal. That's my big picture. Plan two or plan, you know, sort of what they've got there is the next few weeks is what am I going to do over the next few weeks until I can go work in hands on again? I'm lucky because I've got the academy and I'm building to put to switch Ali's holistics over to a training school so I can train therapists. I can train um, in therapies. So my plan is now that this were this month I've been working and developing a new training course and I'm pulling all that together. February's plan is to get this website built. March's plan was to um, do the um, herbal medicine um, diploma, herbal medicine practitioners course. That was that plan. And it's still on for me to do in March. But of course, having that plan written out, I was monitoring the website where I'm going to do the course from, and they were reduced it half price, got it on an offer. So I immediately bought that. I've got it. It's ready. It's sat there now, ready for me to do in March. So that's why I have my plan, why I have my focus and my goals, because I know where I'm going. I know what I want to do. It's having that clarity. And it's this bit like with this Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. So long as I get somewhere, Alice added as an explanation. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat, if you only walk long enough. And that's it for you. Do you just have no plan for your business? So you just work every day, every week with your clients or do you have a plan? Not necessarily a 10 year plan like I have there, my retirement plan. But what do you want to do with your business? How many clients do you want to see? How much do you want to earn? Is there anything you'd like to earn money for? Is there anything you'd like to pay back to the community? Pay it back, whether it's for a charity or something like that. Normally, when you can have clarity, and have an idea then that's when then you can it gives you a better goal and a better plan for what you want to do like you get in a car you don't just drive aimlessly you get in the car you go into some destination and you have a plan of how you're going to get there it's like when i get in the car and i want to go to glastonbury i'm not just going to drive anywhere and hope it'll get me there 
I will have a plan. The sat nav will tell me the directions that I have to go to get to Glastonbury. So what you're looking at there is also, it's like focusing on the marketing. Like we've got Valentine's coming up. Are we going to be open in time for Valentine's? We may not be. So get selling those vouchers. If you do vouchers, if you do packages, if you do products for Valentine's, get selling them now. Because people can still redeem them once it's gone the 14th. It's just it's no point going out to sell them once the 14th is gone. You can still sell them now. People can't go out and do shopping. So what can you do to available to sell that's online? You know, talk to people, talk to your clients, the ones that have already cancelled. Have you spoken to them, checked in with them and said, you know, should we make this, get this done? As soon as I know I can open, I'll be in touch and we can make a date. So you've almost got like a waiting list of clients to book in already. They're the first ones you contact. But let people know on social media who wants to go on a waiting list for a date for when I know I can open. So keep sharing that now and again, and people might then add their name to it so that you can contact them to get a book in. Clients to ring, you know, market and promote to also asking, you know, can they recommend anyone? Um, just anybody that can be on that list for you so that you can start off running as soon as you've got a date and know that when you can open your doors to work. It's you control your business, not the business controlling you. It took me a long while to get my head around that one, because whenever somebody rung up and said they wanted an appointment, I would fit them in to what they wanted. Now I put them in to when I want. So I keep the morning is free. That's for Zoom calls um, with any of my academy, um, chatting to therapists, anything like that, and time for me. And then the afternoon then is training with the academy. So I do, um, you know, the, some, um, I do online training, different bits and things that I do on there through Zoom. And then my therapy clients are in the evening. So I've got different days that I can do different things. Number four is communications. Have you seen this? Don't you remember this song? The tremolos, anyone who's old enough like me. The tremolo silence is golden. No, you don't want me singing. Um, but silence is, is not, silence is golden. It's not. Again, now's not the time to hide. I've seen, again, too many therapists go, really got sorry, I've got to close my doors. Um, thanks for all your support. I'll let you know. I'll be in touch. I'll let you know when I can reopen. You know where I am if you need me. It's for us to remind them that we exist, not for them to remember us. They might see something on social media that catches their eye and they might go and try that instead as soon as the doors open and not come back to you. I always keep talking about my loyal clients and then something happens and you find out that they're not as loyal as you thought. So don't just leave them in the lurch because again then when you suddenly ring out of the blue after a month, two months and you suddenly ring them up, yes you know you care but to some people, it just sounds like that you're just ringing them up for the money. You're just ringing them up to book them in to get the money, not actually to give them a treatment. So have a think about it. You know, we're in a caring industry here. So this is time for us to, to step up and actually care about our community. As you can see there, one of the things there that I created on the first lockdown was an activity pack. I created that on Canva and I sent that off. Um, and I was, you know, I was there. There was activities to do. There was colouring in to do. There was little bits of games that they could play, baking, recipes, all sorts of things that I put in this activity pack. And it was really popular. My clients were getting in touch with me asking, would it be all right if they sent it off to their sister or relative or friend or something? So thinking, always thinking different ideas of what you could do. 
So remember this, remember Joe Wicks. I mean, he's doing it again now. But when we had first lockdown, he was there then doing the PE for kids. And of course, all the adults joined in as well. So he was busy then going through all the way through the five months. He was offering PE every day. And he raised, I think it's over a million he raised for the NHS. He donated everything for the NHS. Well, he's now gone and launched his new app. And in a week, he's taken nine million pound. Good luck to him. Well done. You know, he built that up. He worked hard through those five months with his exercise, with his expertise, with his motivation. And he's gone and launched this new app and it's taken nine million pound in a week. But that's through being there. That's through visible. I'm not saying that's what we've got to do. But it's being visible, even though we can't do one to one training with people, he took it all online. And there's um, Dr. Sam, who um, I'm doing my herbal thing with. I knew about him previously, but I hadn't done any work with him. Well, all of a sudden, then through the, the lockdown, he come up within the spring, early spring, early summer. He done a little um, five day foraging challenge online on Facebook. So I did that, absolutely loved it. And it's taken off from there. And that's who now I'm going to do my herb, my herbal remedies, my herbal medicine with. But he's now got online membership. He's got his Vedic mentor. He does different things. So he's taking his business online now because he can't work face to face with people. So he's training and that he's doing online. But again, I also hear from people going, ah, oh, yeah, but I don't want to be in their face. Um, I was talking to a, a therapist the other week um, when she was launching her membership. And I said, you've really got to push that now and promote it, get out there talking about it. She said, yeah, but I don't want people seeing my posts every day where all I'm talking about is my membership. You may be posting every day, but your people who are fans and followers are not seeing those posts every day. Because remember, we all moan about and about the reach of Facebook is not all that good. So you may have 700 followers on your page, but not all 700 are going to see your posts. So that's why you post on Facebook. You send out a couple of emails. You, you know, put it on your website. You continually talk about it and you, you know, you, you promote it. And the thing is, if you get unsubscribers, if you get people that walk away, they are not your ideal client and they're not going to spend money with you. It's the same as I've done with this when I shared out a couple of emails for this. I got unsubscribers for it. And this was for a free workshop, a free masterclass. So people aren't going to spend money or work with you if they don't like seeing your communication. So no business has ever suffered with too much communication. If somebody doesn't like it or unsubscribes or walks away, they're not going to buy from you anyway. They're not going to like working with you anyway. So how, what can you do? What, how can you keep in touch with your clients? So there's use email. Hi, how are you doing? Just checking if you're still interested in having your appointment when I can get back to work. Something simple, you don't have to make a drawn out email. You can make it really nice and quick, three line, and that's it. Number two, a helpful message, especially for people if you know they're lonely, feeling down, checking they've got enough food, checking if they're getting their prescriptions, um, checking if they need a lift, if they can get for their appointment for their vaccine. Um, you know, I know taxis are doing a lot of that now. If anyone follows Jason Manford, you'll know that that's what he's doing at present. But it might be you I might have clients there that haven't got family around or can't get about so easy. So check if they need a, a lift, you know, to get them to their appointment. Three, you can text, as I said, about Valentine's vouchers, Mother's Day coming up. Um, you can, and I was talking about this to another group um, earlier today. You can create massaging for couples, either a video course or showing it as you know, self massage, how you can do one on one, you can, you know, do different ways with that, either with a how to PDF or, as I said, with videos. Number four, ring them out, ring them out, out of sight, out of mind. It's, you know, again, like I said earlier, it's not for them 
to remember, you know, it's not for, for, for them to remember you, it's for us to remember, you know, remind them that we exist. Number five on your workbook, videos. You might be going, oh God, no, I hate videos, Ali. I don't like this at all. Remember, 75% of people now watch videos because they're educational, they're engaging, they're emotional, and they've got empathy. How many of you watch the dog or cat rescue videos? I keep watching the pit bull ones. I'm a sucker for a, you know, a, a pit bull stray story in America. You know, one that's been abandoned or one that's been living rough. And then someone will, you know, collect him and they'll take him in and nurse him back to health, give him to a foster home. And then he goes to his, for his forever home. Oh, the pit bull ones are gorgeous. But this is what people are watching. So, you know, you've got problems. What can you do with your videos? It's problem solving. They're trust builders. You can even do email video these days. You know, if you've got somebody that contacts you and it's going to be a long drawn out process of email them, do it on a video and then send that email in a video. <coughs> send the video in an email, I mean. So you can use, there's two things. You can use Loom, which you create it in Loom, the video, and then you add that link to the email and it takes it straight through. Or you do one which is called Bomb Bomb, B O M B, Bomb Bomb. You use Bomb Bomb and you actually create the video, and then the video comes up on the email. So they don't even have to click away from your email. And then you can make it more personal using their name if you wanted to do it that way. But videos are so, so much that you can do with them these days. Really good at trust, building that relationship building that know, like, and trust. Number six on your workbook, Facebook Live. How many of you are like that at home alone? Ah, can't do Facebook Live. Facebook Live's brilliant. I must admit, I must admit when I first did mine ooh, a couple of years ago now, I was that, it was terrified. I didn't like it at all. I was sat in my garden doing mine from my phone. Now I just get on with it. People do not look for professional videos on a Facebook Live. OK, you look at mine. I've never got makeup on. I don't wear lippy. I don't know. I'm not into beauty at all. My hair is normally a mess. It's, you know, it's people not looking for professional. They want you. That's who they're buying from. People buy from people. So they want to know you. They want to learn from you. They want you to help them. And that's what Facebook Lives and all this it helps, helps out. Also, I mean, if you're mobile, I know I shared an idea the other day. Um, and I was like, if you're mobile with your treatments, why not do a card that you put in the neighbor's door saying you're visiting in the area providing health and well-being? If you'd like me to knock and discuss this, you know, come give me a number. And they're going, oh, God, no, I couldn't do that. Oh, no, 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 I don't want, you know, my neighbour won't like them knowing that, that she's having treatments. So why not do a Facebook Live from the area? You're not saying who you're with. You're just saying, I'm in the Little Hampton area or I'm in the Rustington area or I'm in Newport or whatever. So doing a Facebook Live saying, I'm in the area. If you want a massage or whatever, let me know message me and then you can always check them out to make sure that they're all right if you're particularly worried about anything but again if it's contacts if they're watching you if they've been commenting and engaging on your posts you'll know who they are it's letting people know that you're about google my business i will come on to the back onto the into the group at the end of this and i'm going to scroll through and see if there's any questions see if there's any comments and then I can answer um, from there. Um, but all this will be staying in the group for about a week anyway, so that you can rewatch this on replay or rewatch it again, fill any bits in, ask any questions as you're working through it. So don't worry about that, but I will go through the, the timeline. Um, I'll go through the comments at the end of this to see if I can answer any questions while we're on live. So number seven is Google My Business. Have you got the setting set up for being closed? 
again, it was interesting when I was checking it the other day that I've still, some, some have still got them settings to open, saying, you know, when they're open during the day and what times. So um, you've got to, you know, change your settings, but check your images. Now is the time that you can check the images, get the images changed, put some images up there that you want. You can share some blog links. You can promote your offers, put your offers in there for your Valentine vouchers, etc. Keep your clients up to date with what's going on, what you're doing, and ask for reviews. Get people to, you know, put their reviews on there. Um, you know, we'll come into that for your treatments. So Google My Business now is a great time to get it up to date because, again, if Google says that it's active, they make sure that, you know, that it's being seen. And don't forget, this comes up on first page. You haven't got to worry about SEO with this. This comes up on page. So when somebody, you know, searches for reflexologist Little Hampton or massage therapist Little Hampton, this comes up. Mine comes up. It's one of those little, little red pin pins that's in the map as you can see there so it comes up automatically um, and this is free to use google my business is free to use so this is a fantastic opportunity for you to have marketing number eight is facebook ads i've put them here um because some people use them some people don't i must admit um i haven't done um Facebook ads much. I have done them, but I haven't done them much. But there's some people that I've seen um, ads for, and they you know, they really work, they do well for them because then you can again you can run competitions and whatever. Um, but again, you can put out there when you're in an area, if you're mobile, um, and again, if you're gonna run a course or a, a challenge, again, you can use it as a Facebook ad. But you can also set a Facebook ad for only local for your area. So it doesn't have to go nationwide. You can keep it just for your ideal client. So you can put the settings on there for local only in your area, for an age bracket, for women only, whatever. You can really nail those settings down now on a Facebook ad on what you want to do. Number nine is remarketing. OK, we've. There's some things that's remarketing, and I wouldn't do this for holistics, but just to make you aware, um, you know, when you say you, you, you go and search for something, maybe it might be on Amazon, you might be searching for a book, or you look for something somewhere for that book, but you don't buy it. And then you could be scrolling through Facebook, and all of a sudden down the side, this book pops up as an advert on the side of your timeline. Or, you know, if you're looking for a set of pens or notebooks or something and you suddenly start whatever you go and look online, these adverts are coming up for that notebook or that book you were wanting to get. That's remarketing. That's where companies like Amazon and eBay and whatever put the remark, put remarketing out. But when you've looked at something, they'll then go and put those ads up to remind you. And you can do that again as well with your business if you wanted to. I also think of remarketing as repurposing. So reusing posts, reusing video. So if you do a video, you can edit it, make it into short little clips. You can get it transcribed and make it into a blog. You can also create images out of it um, and little short snippets out of it and put on YouTube. You can create memes out of it. So I always like the repurposing. You create one thing and then from that, you create lots of little, little marketing pieces that you can create from it. So that's for me is remarketing. It's that repurposing of content. Number 10 is your responses. Again, it's how you do the follow up how you get in contact with people. If they inquire from you, do you follow them up? How long do you take to follow them up? What do you do with following up? Do you only just contact them the once? And if they say, no, thank you very much. I'm not interested anymore, that's fine. But if they say, oh, I haven't got my diary with me at the moment, I'll, I'll be in touch and they don't. Do you then follow up? Because again, remember, people don't buy the first thing they see. They take a while to find out about you, to check you out. B 
bit like a stalker, you know, see what you're up to. So it normally takes anywhere between seven and 20 times to come across you, an article, information, post on the timeline, blog, whatever, before they go, ah, actually, yes. And they might have signed up for your newsletter and done all that before they actually book an appointment with you. I had somebody who found me on Google My Business, but then actually went and checked me out on Twitter to see if I was still active because he'd seen other ones and they weren't doing anything with their business. Where, because my Twitter was up to date and I was posting on Twitter, he rung me up. So people will react with you and book you for different reasons. They will check you out in different ways. Number 11 is your offers. Every business can make an offer. And that's certainly us. We do offers, but don't, don't, don't please give away. Don't do 10% offers. Don't do half price offers. Don't, you know, say that, you know, you can get this at half price. Don't give your treatments away. Give them added value. So see if you can put something together as added value as your offer. Um, again, I was mentioning about it today and I was saying about keeping in, keeping in contact with clients and responses and things. And I was saying to people today that to send out a little card, keep in touch with people, keep in communication. I said nobody letter writes anymore. So I've gone and got myself a, um, um, a wax stamp. So now when I write letters, I've got myself an ink pen. So now I, I write letters out in an ink pen and then I wax stamp the envelope. And people love getting that through the post. They don't get that often, they get a letter. But to get a wax stamp letter is just so unusual. So they love it now when I send stuff through the post. But what you can do for your clients is to send them a letter or a card, just checking in with them. But buy a, a bag of heart-shaped chocolate, heart red heart-wrapped chocolates and put one bit of chocolate in an envelope and put that through the post as a little you know to show them some love so you know we can do different things it's called added value don't forget a lot of our clients now don't just have one-off treatments they either have block of treatment or they book you every month they keep coming back time and time and time again so look at that for over a year or other how many years you've got your clients view, that's their value. How much are they spending with you? It's not just that 35 or 45 pound treatment, they're with you a long time. So think about that added value, think about putting things together. Oh, that went through a quick then. Um, so number 12 is your scorecard. You might think, oh, gosh, what's this? This is a bit more of corporate high end thinking, but you can bring this back down to you know, a one person therapist business. Because this is all about knowing your numbers. This is not going every month, seeing how you do. And then at the end of the financial year, you put your accounts together to find out what you do or you find out how your business is doing by checking your bank account. This is actually seeing what business you can do, what you're capable of doing and what you are doing. So this is where I want you to actually have a look. You can do what we call scorecard and it's how you can focus on this daily or weekly. So it might be that you look at it and you go, right, I'm going to work five, six days a week, four days a week. So you actually put work that out, right, I'm going to work so many days a week. And I actually want to see, all right, with COVID now, we can't have so many. You might not want to work so many. You might want to work with four. You might want to see six clients a day. You might want to see eight clients a day. But you actually put in there appointments booked. So have a look at your times that you're open. How many appointments do you actually want or can you get in? And that's the actual how many you can. So like I've got on there, Monday six, Tuesday six, Wednesday six, Thursday six, Friday six, Saturday three. I don't want to work so many Saturday and I'm only going to work in the morning. I don't actually work Saturdays. I never have done. But anyway, um, so you might say you want to do six a day. 
Then underneath that, the actual is how many have you actually got? Because if you then look at the start of the week, say on the Sunday, and you can see that, oh, right, I've got four booked in, I've got two left for Monday. I may have three left um, for Tuesday. I might have, might be fully booked Wednesday, I might be fully booked Thursday. I might have four appointments left on Friday. You can then go in with a social media post saying, I have these appointments left. Do you want an appointment? Do you want a treatment? Would you look for, you know, whatever you do the sale. You might have a couple of clients that are waiting for an appointment that you might want to text them and say, I've got this appointment at this time. Do you want it? So you can use that. That keeps you on track on on clarity of how many you can do and how many you've actually got. So the show up rate can be 100 percent, can be 90 percent, can be less. It's all called you know your business. You can work and do this for yourself. So the actual percentage then you put underneath here. Average transaction is 35. And you can see on my Saturday, if I was going to work a weekend, I put the money up. I don't work for the same price on a Saturday because I don't want to work on a Saturday. If I ever did work, and I did do the odd one in my early days, they paid more for the convenience of me coming out on a Saturday. But my average spend is 35. Now it would be 50 quid on a Saturday. So total revenue six times 35 is 210. What's the actual revenue that you've actually taken on that day with the appointments that you've got booked in? So that keeps you a check of how you're doing daily, whether you know you can see how your marketing's doing. You can see if you've got the clients coming through. You can see if it's only your clients that your regular clients that keep coming back, that you're not getting any new ones through. Then you need to look at what marketing you're doing and what's working and what's not. So you can look at it that way. The next one as well as you can do is if you do it by the week. So number of appointments available, six a day, four days a week is 24 at £35 an appointment. That's the average spend. So you might get some like 25 appointments, you might get some 45 appointments but it's the average spend you want. And then the turnover can be 840 pounds. So then you look at it then from the 1st of March, you write it out from the 8th of March, you write it out for the 15th. And again, this is knowing your numbers. This is knowing if you are on target to hit your monthly goals. This will find out if you're on target to be able to pay your bills. So instead of having to look at your bank account every month, or moving money around, this lets you know what you're doing, how you're doing, and whether you need to, to step up on anything, on any of the marketing or any of the follow up, or whether you've got to start networking, whether you've got to put the name out there, whether you've got to ask for referrals, whatever, things like that. That's what you do for number 12. And then your last one is number 13, is your implementation. The next few weeks is hard. I'm not going to lie. It's not easy. You've got to sit and look at through some of those points there and go through it and work at it. It's not easy to just go, right, what's my response is I'm going to do this, this and this. You've got to sit down and work these things out. But that's when you can then you can look at it and you've got the next couple of weeks then to work through these things without any other pressures. Yes, you're going to have pressure of family and kids, but you're not going to have any other pressures of work. You can give it the full focus. And as I said, don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. You know, we've got the therapist on business group. Come in and you can come in and chat in there. There's different ways there that you can work with me. So there's free online information in the freebie area that you can get loads more information of how to run your business and what to do with it. Downloadable courses is mentoring with me and there's membership. So there's lots of different ways there that you can work. So let me just have a look now and see if I can get at um, the different things. Right. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We've got some questions going on here, which is fabulous. Right. How many have we got? 27 comments. So Sapna, I might start doing a school card when I reopen. I do offers monthly treatment therapy offers. It's been popular in this way. It gets to the treatment they haven't had before. Exactly. Yeah, that's one way to promote it. Definitely. 
I'm not, not, I'm not on Twitter, not sure if I should. I wouldn't, Sapna. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Um, if you're already on Facebook and you're already on Instagram, which I know you are, then I wouldn't bother with Twitter. Um, Twitter was, I must admit, my Twitter for Alice Holistics is, I'm not in it live anymore. Twitter was the first one I did when I first started. Twitter was the first one that I was there for. Um, but um, I don't look at it now. It just automatically posts when I post. So there won't now be anything on my Twitter one um, now for a long time because I haven't posted in my Facebook Alice Holistics page for a long while. So there's nothing to come up on Twitter for me for ages. I am on Twitter on Alice Therapy Academy, but again, I haven't posted on that on hardly anything. Twitter is not as good as it used to be. I don't like Twitter um, when I first started, but I think you've got enough with Twitter and with um, Facebook and Instagram. Um, you may want to look at Pinterest. Um, that might be another good one for you, but two is really enough, maybe three, because if you start doing too many, then you don't, you lose the focus on working on that platform. Um, Bridgeta, I did try to change it on Google and it wouldn't let me change it. I gave up. Oh, right. OK. Yeah. If you've had a problem there, then that's, you know, understandable. That's fine. If you've got a problem with it, um, no problem. You know, that's fair enough. OK. It's not letting me see any more, any more comments. It said there's 27 comments <laughs> and I can only see four. So um, I don't think it's going to let me have and look at any more. But what I'll do is I'll go through it in a minute now when I come off and I'll ask and I'll answer any questions that I can here um, and see um, if there's anything more, anything that I can I can answer. But if you've got any more questions now, ask me now while I'm here. If you've got anything you want to follow on with that, as I said, ask that while I'm here. Um, this is going to stay in the group for about a week. So you, again, you can watch this on reply. You can ask me any questions like I said, again later over the next couple of days. Um, you can do that if you want to chat with me about any of your plans, any of your goals, what you want to do over the next couple of days. Um, I'm still unsure about Facebook ads. Yeah. Um, Facebook ads is a bit of a um, bit of a worry, bit of a it's I've got to think actually how to answer that one. Hang on, Sam, come back. I find my newsletter is helpful in sharing and asking clients what they need to know and use these topics and comments as a blog. Brilliant. That's it, Debbie. Yep, perfect. That's it. Absolutely perfect on that. Not a not a problem. That's okay, Pauline. Thank you. Um, I'm still unsure what Facebook ads. Yeah, Facebook ads is how once you've got it sussed, once you've got it done. Facebook ads is good. Um, is it really one for our industry? I'm not sure. Not for actual appointments. I'm not sure. Um, I think um, if we if we're offering promotions, if we're offering, um, like I said, maybe one for the Valentine's vouchers. Maybe if you were um, offering um, PDF downloads if you were offering courses or challenges um, or product packages like you've got um is it tropic i think you'd know is it no not tropic you do is it it's um oh I'm trying to think of the the projects that you sell it's not tropic um, 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 um spa something isn't it that you do um it might be if you were allowed you could do Facebook ads for the spa products. But um, yeah, it's it's Temple Spa. That's it. I knew it was something like that. Facebook ads are great for getting the reach. It's no good. I mean, yes, you can nail it down into, into your area. Um, and you can get be more specific with it. It's, and it's once you've done it, it, the Facebook ads are really easy and simple to use. I've used them a couple of times. I'm a hit and miss. I keep taking courses on it um, to, uh, to find out. I keep typing courses on there um, to find out how to do them better. And again, I'm still hit and miss. 
So I'm not sure whether it was me or whether it was just the industry and whatever I was I was trying to do. Um, I would honestly think that leaflet drop um, and more specific stuff will be better than a Facebook ad, but I don't know. There might be somebody that's done Facebook ads and has really worked well with it. Um, it's worth a bit of worth a bit of researching on that one, and I might do a bit more research. I know I have done some training on Facebook ads, um, but it's it's. I so said I had to put it there because I want people to start thinking about it, and that's what a lot of this is tonight: is to get people to think. You don't have to do it. There's other options you've got there, like being in contact with clients, like writing letters or sending lumpy mail in the post, different things like that. Um, but you've really got to have a good, compelling offer to do a Facebook ad. And that's why I said, if it's, I would think if it's like, like we're seeing a lot at the moment, the online stuff, if you had a set of videos put into a course or an online course to sell to people, or um, like an online membership or something like that, then I would use Facebook ads. But for Facebook ads, um, for doing for a treatment, you, you can, it's hit and miss with it and it's actually doing them. Oh, I've written lots of notes too. I think my brain will explode. Oh dear, didn't quite want to cause that this evening, but that's always good feedback if it's, um, if you get loads of ideas from it. But this is just, this is just general what to do on your business, whether we're on lockdown or not. This is just general working on your business. This is the everyday stuff. And this is why I said that you either find the time to do it every day or you outsource it to other people to get it done for you. But this is the general stuff that we do to promote a business, to keep our business in people's minds. And I know it was Brigida that posted up the other day and she said that she forgot she had a business. That's it. You can go really quiet. And if you all forget you've got a business, what are your clients thinking? So, you know, it's you might think, oh, God, it's so much work. And it is. You can't sit back with a, with a you know, arm business. We've got to enjoy it and you've got to do things that you enjoy. That's why, like with Instagram, I haven't let yet learn how to use i haven't done the reels at all but i haven't learned how to do the reels and i'm not using the um, stories properly because at the moment i'm still getting my head around being comfortable with using instagram i'm i don't think my instagram posts are visually appealing yet they're not you know all they're appealing to is people who are fun looking at my hashtags and then offering me LMM, MLM stuff. I keep getting messages for that. So you've got to, to think about and look at about what you're doing. I mean, TikTok, I'm not even going down that road at all. Clubhouse is this new one that's now been launched on for iPhones. I'm not even looking at that. You've got to make things enjoyable. Lots of marketing people saying you should post three to five times a day on your Facebook business page. I wouldn't do that. If I was doing that, I'd be, I mean, you know, I'm addicted enough as it is, and I post once a day. I'm just on there a lot doing different stuff. But if I was posting three to five times a day on my page, I'd be then feeling, oh, I had to do it. Oh, God, I've got to post. I would lose the enjoyment of doing social media. And that's the point. You've still got to enjoy it. Some stuff has to get done but you've got to find ways that you can enjoy doing it. So I found ways that I enjoy doing social media. I found ways that I enjoy doing planning and, you know, scoping out my business. I love looking at mind maps. I love researching. I love, you know, doing different things on social media. It won't always work, but I'm happy with it. If, if I'm not getting the reach, if I'm not getting the page likes, if I'm not getting what I want from it, I know that I've got to go and learn more. But at the moment, I'm happy with what the results I'm getting from it and I'm enjoying the use. And if it's a case of that you really don't like doing it, you've either then got to decide, right, I'm not doing social media at all 
which I think would be a mistake because that's where a lot of people are now hanging out, or you outsource it to someone else. It's like I always outsource my um, bookkeeping because I just can't stand figures. I'm no good with figures. So I'll outside, you know, outsource my bookkeeping totally. I'm building my website. It's taken me a hell of a lot longer than I thought it would do, but I'm interested. I'm techy. I'm geeky. I want to see what works behind the scenes. If it takes me too long, I'm going to have to hand it over to my web, web guy so he can build it in a matter of days and where it's taken me weeks, months to do. And I know when I get to that stage, if it's not coming together, I'll move it on. But these are decisions that we have to make. There's things that we have to look at it and work on it daily and be in front of other people because there's lots of therapists out there that have switched off. They've walked away from their social media. They've walked away from their business until the government says, well, you can go back to work. Then you'll see them. Then you'll see them going, oh, I'm reopening. I've got this date. I can do this, this and this, which is fine. But you will have already had that continuity with your clients. You'll have kept that relationship up with them. You'll have been in you know, constant contact with them in that time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know that feeling reading the website. Yes, it's it's. Some people say it's really easy to build a website. And I suppose in a way it is. It's just I'm still trying to get my head around it. So it's once I've got it and it's coming together, but it's it's still not the enjoyment is still not quite there yet. I might get it next week when I really focus on it, because before I've been building it around other things this time next week, it will be just focus on that. Um, so there we go. I hope that all helps. As I said, I'm going to scroll through once this is finished. I can actually go on the post and I'll go through all the comments and see if I've missed everything, anything. And I will comment on that. But again, as I said, we're here and we're in the therapist on business group. Do come in and chat, but just plan it out. Just schedule it out. Just have a think about what you want to achieve, what you want to do. Have that clarity and that goal that helps with the business a lot easier when you've got an idea, the scorecard that, you know, how many treatments you want to do, you know, what, what you want need to aim for. And again, if you haven't got those appointments filled and then when you're contacting old clients and they're not filling them, what do you then need to do? How do you make new contacts? How do you find new people? That's when you then got to look at your marketing and what you need to do. So there we go. Take care, everyone. I'm now going to go in and have a nice glass of wine. Um, and calm down now from that this evening. Uh, thanks very much for being on there. It looks like there's quite a few of you on, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Hope that's helped. Um, oh, good, Jackie, you're there. <laughs> Glad to see that you found it. <laughs> um, yeah, scorecards are a great idea. Uh, but keep chatting. Yes, exactly, Scarlett. Um, Keep chatting to one another when you're in, in here. Um, and, you know, as I said, keep chatting to one another in here while you're here. And then if not, then in the therapist on business group, you can still you can still find it. But yeah, but thanks for being on here tonight. Um, as I said, I'm about um, actually, yes, I'm in here all day tomorrow um, working. So I'm about here tomorrow. If anyone wants to again, quiz me and send me a message on anything. But take care, stay safe, stay well, and I'll, I'll catch up with it. Oh, I've just a light bulb moment. Weddings. I have a booklet I did through Canva. Oh, sat now. There we go. ka -ching. That's brilliant. Right, now I will go. Take care, stay safe, everyone, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye.